we, we have a legacy of hotspots in Minneapolis since the uh, uh, Sherman and Weisberg um, trip out there in uh, 2008, I believe, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, 1988 is what I'm thinking of. And um, that's when, that's when uh, our chief, uh, who at the time was uh, Tony Boza, brought out, um, had had worked with uh, Larry Sherman previous, and uh, they started looking at this. When I first brought this idea up, um, about hotspot or reintroduce this idea after working with Chris, um, I was told, I was shouted down and, and said, do not use that terminology. Uh, as you can see though, that, uh, you know, the, the cops did not want to, they were, they were part of the instrument. They were the actual working instrument on that. And they had, some of them had, had significant disdain for what, what was asked of them. At the time we had hired a lot of cops. We had, um, uh, and, and, and some of them, to, to answer your question, were basically deployed to be in just to as a visual deterrent. The idea was to measure that impact of that, that squad car or that cop working in that area. And so there was, there was a bit of disdain, so I had a little bit of resistance when I, when I first started to talk about these type of things. Just, don't, just call it something different than, than hot spots. We're, we're hearing that with predictive analytics as well now going forward. But we were a lab for a lot of these things. Um, the uh, repeat offender program, domestic assault. We had a lot of innovative programs back in the 80s that, that we, we tend to uh, you know, reap the fruits of right now. One of the things I wanted to just quickly illustrate here, if I know how to work this thing here, Chris, okay. Um, was this is a, approximately the time that uh, um, David and Larry came out to Minneapolis, and in in the wake of that, they used calls for service data as their as their basic premise. And I think a lot of the a lot of the uh, people in the agency that were you know looking towards the future were kind of embarrassed about that we didn't have anything automated in terms of report management system. So in the way right in the wake of that, they started to, to go into development to develop this. RMS system that we are actually using to this day. It was, a, it was internally designed, but we have been using that through the whole duration. We have 20 years of data on that, which is really advantageous when you're, when you're doing, let's say, analysis on juveniles, for instance. But that came right about here, and uh, we started feeding data into that system in about 1990. When, uh, Robert Olson came in. He was, a, he was our uh, chief at the time. He came in from, uh, he was actually the president of PERF. And he actually uh, was the one who brought in uh, Comstat about six, uh, what is it? 714 weeks or something like that ago. But it was in uh, uh, February of uh, 1998. And um, one of the things we saw immediate, we saw an immediate uh, reaction, but we also, and, and this is just one piece of data that I could sort of correlate with, with our, our part one crime rates. But we saw this, this change here. This is actually sort of a, a leadership dip. This is actually, you know, due, a, a lot of this is due to staffing, but we saw this immediate crime reaction that we, are, we were quite proud of, but it, it seemed to be more than what we were seeing across the country in terms of that. And uh, part of that brought in this, this crime analysis uh, um, program that we actually have in place right now. I want to show you this just simply because of this number right here. This is mid-year this year so far. I want to show you that we're looking at a, at least in this part, we think that this goes back 20 or almost to 19 83 that this that this uh, uh, a violent crime rate is actually is uh, this low um, one so we're really happy about this 15 percent decrease in crime versus last year right and but I want to show you something else we when we look at it citywide or we, even when we look at it precinct wide we start to see this dilution when we start to focus on these violent crime hotspots in the city then we start to see 10 out of 19 of them are actually showing increases in crime mid-year so far this year um, this is the one uh, this is the one that I'm going to so, show, sort of illustrate, but some of these that are in here, this is one that actually just popped up. I won't talk a lot about this, even though I have a lot of illustrations of it, but I'm uh, not with me here. But this one sort of popped up in the last year, uh, maybe 18 months. This one it goes back to the Sherman Weisberg uh, hotspot. This is one that's still, still in action. This same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. Definitely same thing here and definitely in, in some of these areas. These are areas that have been hotspots for 20 years. So when we sent this out in the same sort of illustration of, of, of hotspots, and this is a probability grid of these uh, really actually malicious assault-driven robberies. They're, they're more assaults than robberies where they're sneaking up on people using brass knuckles and hitting them. It was widely publicized. If you want to Google it, you'll see that. One of the things that we suggested was we took these historic hotspots, basically tried to connect the dots, including surrounding this probability grid, and what happened was we started to see this. We knew that the, the patterns of, of, of visual saturation in these areas of, of uniform police officers and their cars and stops and um, actually creates almost this vortex of activity that swirls around so that, so that when you, if you're concentrating on these areas, 
you'll get this peripheral activity. We, this precinct was well aware of this because they've been practicing hotspots policing for a while, and they actually stopped a car right over here within, after, um, this was sent out at about 3 o'clock that afternoon, and about uh, 11.30 that night, they actually stopped a car that fit the description of that. And when we looked at that person uh, who was in the car, that person's criminal history, we saw uh, that behavior about uh, 18 months beforehand where there was violence more than just trying to do a robbery. That's sort of where we had to use some kind of things like this. This is, and this is a, le this, didn't, this is not one that we actually send out to, um, to the patrol officers. This is something for administrative purposes only, sort of to describe the methodology that we're using we're, to try to get this sort of future orientated analysis. We're leveraging as much data as we possibly can, especially as it pertains to guns and gun seizures and things like that, to basically say, this is, these black areas are the, are the correlating data geographic data areas. These are the hotspots for gun crime. And we did that through leveraging these, the traditional, again, the Sherman and Weisberg idea, the actual, where people were actually being shot in the present year. Here's the uh, 2010 person years, but also using the five year shot spotter, which gives a, a much more than a calls for service. It actually gives you that precise location. And that's, that was the strategy that we used for that. Any questions about that one? Okay. And this is the guided missile map. I wanted to sh when, we, when I went to the predictive uh, symposium, one of the things we didn't see there was we didn't see a lot of product being shared. And one of the things that, uh, that I, you know, I wanted to come here and at least show you a couple of examples of how we've been doing this. And one of those things is here's, the hot, here's our traditional hotspot in, in the red. But what I wanted to do when we started to see, that when we started to drill down by uh, temporally on this, on this geographic area, we started to see overlap. And I, didn't want to, I don't want the officers to think that this is completely like a wall in here because we have problems. We've had traditional problems with that. What we want to do is we want to suggest that there's a bit of overlap. This isn't an exact particular science on this, but we, that's what this was all about. And, and that's sort of an example of how that would go out to the street. That is a patrol designed strictly for patrol. This is what I, what I was talking about. This is the, uh, the problem solving. Um, a chart now, and, and like I said, this was we had hit with some resistance. I think that going forward, especially if we get the matrix translation um, grant, that this is what we're this is we, we we've been taking steps. We've convinced them that that hotspots is the strategy that we're going to employ. I think that now we're getting uh, uh, some commanders that are actually on board with this, you know, accepting this. But the problem is who's going to actually tally this, and I think we're we're coming around on that. Uh, one of the things I've added to this is this new idea about community engagement. Right now, um, with that measurement, we're at, we added measurements in that thing on uh, field contacts, which we hadn't measured before. And, we, and again, it created a bit of resistance because there's some, people that, uh, there's some precincts that don't employ uh, field contacts. And so when we started to show it, all of a sudden there's this great disparity. Curfews was one of those other ones. But as we move forward, we're gonna, this is going to become that matrix translation chart, and this is how we're going to actually you know, uh, proceed. Um, but this is actually a, a, what, uh, what I propose um, is a uh, calls for service type of thing where the officer can call out and say, I'm out on a, and, and I, this is sort of uh, <laughs> a play on words. I, I, I did get shouted down when I showed this one to uh, certain people in the department because they said, uh, it, it's going to be a tough sell because people are going to abuse that. Calm, you're going to call out on the calm, you know, the ultimate Latin, what is the Latin origin of that? Together we, we do, something along those lines. Um, but we put it out there um, because we want to create a, some kind of a measurement that's actually proactive but also uh, non-enforcement related. That I'm going into this hotspot area to actually engage the public and, and actually, you know, find out more about what's going on or, or help problem solve or get ideas for problem solving. And these are, those, uh, uh, these are some of these areas that we saw the most performance out of in the Jacksonville, uh, in the Jacksonville study. But Can you say more, Jeff, about how are you going to use this particular data collection or data recording tool? I think how, it, how I, I think it needs to be done in almost either a quarterly or a, um, or a, uh, uh, mid-year type of thing, somewhat like this, that we move away. These, these are, of course, the part one crimes, and this is, this is that performance category. I would rather replace and maybe summarize this and summarize this and then bring in those other categories into something along those lines so that we know what actually works, so we can actually prove what works. That we, because uh, 
Because right now, I, like I said, we, we know that that one isn't, isn't solving all the problems um, in some of these hotspots. In some, it, it seems to be working, but in, in PV Park, it is clearly not. In Jackson Square, one of the other ones that, that uh, arose in the last 18 months, it is clearly not working. Mm -hmm. Are you going, what, what are you going to capture? What is the data you're going to capture? For interventions. The number of interventions mm -hmm. that you do, yeah. as opposed to the outcomes, which would be like, um, we've, um, we've picked up the Cincinnati um, Light Index that they use, which is a community appearance index, which is a way to measure on a, a Likert scale yes. community yep. appearance over time. We had not gone that uh, gone in that direction yet <laughs> you know what i mean um what we're trying to do is it, we, you know we've introduced the hot we, we reintroduced the hotspot strategy we're trying to really you know engage them into into much more holistic type of hotspots intervention you are just gonna i think it's a then in i think it, i think that's the way we have to start okay. um and um does that make sense is there something that i can you have to say about that Because of time. But that is a very important question about, you know, what exactly will you be measuring in terms of the number of interventions, the hours that often are putting are putting in there, uh, the out, outcomes, so uh, reductions of crime, this um, indication of environmental improvement. Um, there's just so many things that you can use as outcomes for your measures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that really what we were striving for was, was to get the number of interventions like we did in Jacksonville, as well as then and, and measure it through the reduction in crime. And going forward, this is, uh, as I mentioned, we're are being evaluated at this time for the um, Smart Policing Grant, and this is part of the strategies that we want to employ. Again, uh, how do we, what, what is the best way to invest in technology? I think the best way to do that is to test it, to experiment with it. Um, moving towards the matrix translation uh, more than we are actually doing now. Um, I like the ideas that the superintendent has, has discussed. I think that we can really engage m going forward with that. Um, further understanding of the police dosage. We are definitely getting there, and we're doing that geographically. Because uh, we've had requests uh, in the last couple of weeks for precinct-wide, uh, you, know, uh, you know, interventions, uh, you know, statistical charts on, on, the stati on the interventions by precinct. But the problem is, like I showed you, uh, you know, you'll start to, you lose the, di uh, you lose the sort of the pith of that, of what's actually happening in those hotspots where crime is more concentrated. Um, Again, we're looking at how do we do this more? How do we continually improve the crime analysis uh, function? And then doing more with, you know, putting research into practice on this. Any other questions? Okay, thanks, Jeff.